My name is Philip Whitchurch, and the character I played was uh, Cap uh, Captain Fredrickson, who was nicknamed Sweet William. <laughs> in a supermarket in Chiswick. <laughs> no, actually, it was the director, Tom Clegg. Tom, I'd worked with Tom a couple of times before, and I saw him in, in Sainsbury, and he said, what are you up to? And I said, um, why? He said, I want you to be in Sharp. <clears throat> he said, are you busy? And I was, <clears throat> I was doing a bill at the time, <clears throat> excuse me. And I said, um, <clears throat> if I can get out of it, um, I'd love to do Sharp. And so technically I was supposed to be under contract to the bill, but I, I had a clause which said I could get out if something came up. So I made sure I was written out for six weeks, which was the gap I had if, if I was gonna do Sharp. And it just worked out brilliantly. So, uh, so um, it was one of those lovely jobs where you don't, you don't have to really do the meeting. Well, I did actually meet Tom later when he explained the character. And um, then I went out to the, to the Crimea and, and did it and had an extraordinary time. I wouldn't say it was a brilliant time, but it was an extraordinary time. <laughs> I read the books that um, Sweet William was featured in and thought about it and thought despite his appearance, he's obviously a very cultured man and an intelligent man. And I didn't want to go for the whole Germanic thing. So I, I sat back on the accent and, um, you know, his character was, I think it was, he was a lawyer or he becomes a lawyer but he's interested in the law. And oh, I'm remembering now these things. Um, but it was just, he was such an extraordinary character because physically he was so disfigured because of previous campaigns where he'd lost his teeth because of a, uh, a musket ball through his cheek. And he had this horsehair wig, which, <laughs> and also he only had one eye. So, so physically he was a bit of a car crash. Um, <laughs> and I, what I want, I was kind of encumbered by a, a, a uniform, a shako, a wig, a eye patch, funny teeth. So it, really at some point, like the photograph behind you, some of it I just discarded or discarded. I, I, I would make a, a token gesture towards the, the bits but um, I felt I couldn't spend the whole day looking like that. And also to be somebody out in the, the wilds um, as a soldier, he, he probably would have worn the wig in the evening, <laughs> you know what I mean? But the practicalities of something like that, I don't think it would have worked on a battlefield. So I discarded stuff. But um, yeah, that's kind of how I came about um, working out my way through him. Um, when I was first booked, I went out to the Crimea. And in those days, back in about, it was about 94, I think, um, it was a lot convoluted journey out there. So you would go via Moscow and then you get an internal flight down to the Crimea to a place called Simferopol, uh, which was the capital of the Crimea. And so my first stint on, on, on Sharp was out in the Crimea, which is, Extraordinarily beautiful, weird place. Um, Simferopol was pretty bleak because you got to remember this was just around the time of Perestroika and facilities out there were very, very basic. And so that's why I said, when I was saying earlier, I said about it was an extraordinary time. It wasn't the most enjoyable time in some ways because the facilities were very poor, very basic. And 
it wasn't like you could go out if you weren't working, you could go out and watch a film or go and have a coffee somewhere. There were no coffee bars, there were no restaurants, certainly for Westerners. So you're stuck in this crummy hotel and it was crummy because it was, it was huge, very grand, but very, very tired around the edges. Um, but then we got to go down to Yalta, which is beautiful. Absolutely. And the, that part of the Black Sea is beautiful. And some of the locations we went to were extraordinary. Um, and I loved it, but I was glad to get home to my wife and kids. Um, and then the next year, after that, I didn't really want to do any more, but I knew he probably would turn up. I, ho I hoped he would turn up. So the next year, I didn't go out. And I think the, the I mean, probably someone like Jason, or who was a, a, a regular on all the episodes, could tell you that the, uh, I think they had all kinds of problems with facilities and the, I think it was basically the Russian mafia. So they, they the next time I was involved, we, we were in Turkey uh, in a place called Antalya. And, and then we went across to a place called Salifki. And again, that part of the Turkish coast, very beautiful. And again, extraordinary. Um, and then my final year, which was the next year, which is about 96, we were in a place called Adapazari, which they were filming Sharp's Waterloo there. And I had some exteriors to do. And then we, we stayed around. Well, actually, we stayed around Adapazari for a while. And I can't remember. Oh, then we went back down to Salifki. Uh, but it was great. I loved being in Turkey. It was much, because, you know, Turkey is a holiday venue. Um, but I have to say, my memories really are, are of the Crimea in some ways, because it's such an extraordinary place to be. You're never going to go there on holiday. <laughs> Why would you? But it was an extraordinary place to be. So, yeah, great, great, great venues. I haven't read. I mean, I did. I did a. I did a, a pod, not a podcast. I did a, a, a webinar with Jason. A couple of them where we, he was just interviewing characters from specific episodes. Um, so I did a couple of those, and I knew he was he was about to have his book published, but I haven't read it yet. I'm hoping he'll send me a copy. <laughs> Yeah, they all tend to blend into one. But I, yeah, I, I remember, I think I remember the last one more than any because I had a lot to do in the last one. And so I, I had, a, you had a chance because he, he thinks he's in love with this woman who also is in love with Sharp and he gets the wrong end of the stick and feels like Sharp's betrayed him. Um, I remember that. And so that was nice to do because there was a lot of emotional stuff to do. Uh, apart from just the action stuff. But um, the action stuff is great because um, despite being so far away from home, the, the stunt guys who were Russian and Ukrainian, I think, they were brilliant, the fierce, ferocious drinkers, but they were very good and they looked after you. So in all the kind of fights and stuff, they were very good and the armory department was very good and you always felt safe which I think is important for an actor because if you don't feel safe, you can't do your best work. I love them. <laughs> I particularly, you know, I love the, my outfit particularly because it, it was so, so stylish for its time. I mean, you look at it, you go completely impractical with all the adornments. But it was, I'm just looking at it now. I, um, it was a bit slimmer then as well. <laughs> so it, it, look, it would look better on me then than it does on me now. <laughs> I wouldn't even get into it now. But um, the, the only thing I, I uh, it, it was such a, I mean, everybody I thought looked great in it. I mean, the women, the way they dressed the women, the way all the officers, and, and it, you know, the civilians, the way they were all dressed would look great. Um, I think the uh, the only issue I had with the um, uh, with the costumes really was, and I could see why, 
if you look at all the like Sharp and Harper, they, the, none of them are wearing shackos. And I just think probably Sean took the lead on this, or maybe Dara O'Malley did, but it's very difficult to look sexy in a shako. So <laughs> I think they all whipped them off. And I had, you know, I had a shako, a wig, an eye patch. I just felt you, I was kind of trying to act through all this stuff. So I thought, well, if they're not going to wear a shako, I'm going to whip mine off as well. And while I'm at it, I'll whip the wig off. <laughs> so, so that, but I remember the, the, uh, the makeup truck and every day I had to go in, I had to have this scar put on my cheek. And I, I used to have, um, I had this opaque um, uh, lens, eye lens um, that I used to have to put in. And sometimes I'd have to have it in all day, which was really tricky because because you were outside all day, like the terrain you're looking at behind you, get a bit of dust behind the, the contact lens. And it was really painful. So I tended to carry it with me and put it in just before a shot. And it was the same with the teeth. Because you, you then not speaking like this. And uh, <laughs> you couldn't keep it in all day. So you just whip it in before a shot. In fact, I've still got those teeth in my makeup box because <laughs> nobody else is going to eat it because they, they were fitted for my mouth, you know. I thought Sean was brilliant, always an absolute consummate professional, um, just got on with it, really. And Dara was... Um, great fun um it could be tricky but i think um i think that's to do with they've been out there a long time i mean i would come out and do six weeks they'd be out there for three months four months you know and every day you're having to get up and go through all that stuff i you know in very difficult conditions sometimes Sometimes you'd be halfway up a mountain and then, you know, the horses wouldn't behave properly or something wouldn't turn up or, you know, you'd have a problem with something or you're trying to be discussed a line and you'd realise that you're two hours behind schedule and really all Tom wanted to do or, or Michael the first was get the shot in the can. And, you know, actors are talking about, well, my character, I think, you know, it's all that stuff going on. And so um, I think, you know, the... Given the circumstances, I think everybody generally behaved very well. And I didn't, I, you know, from my point of view, I, I think, as somebody might disagree, but I think I really liked everybody I was working with, you know, and I thought the crew were great. You had to be because otherwise you couldn't, you couldn't do it. You just couldn't do it. It was so challenging to try and shoot. You know, the English, you know, a, a UK company, shooting a period drama out in those conditions for 12 months, three two-hour films. It's very challenging, you know? I mean, the Americans would have probably twice as big a budget if they were making something like that. Uh, and I think, given the, the conditions, they did an extraordinary job. Well, I loved all the action stuff because... I'm just a big kid, really. I, sorry, I'll just take the cat away. <laughs> and, uh, of course, anything with a bit of meat emotionally, I always enjoyed. Like the standoff with, there was a standoff with Sharp when he realises, I can't remember what it is, he realises this woman doesn't love him. And he has this row with Sharp. Um and as I say, all the, the action stuff, I, I, I yeah, I, that's all. You know, it's, it's difficult to pin down things because sometimes days go by. And if somebody said to you a week, a week later, what were you filming last week? I'd say, I haven't got a clue. <laughs> Completely forgotten. You, you just get up every day and do your job. I hope you've learned your lines and you can hit your marks and be a professional, really. But... Um, as it went on, particularly the last the last um, series that I was in, really, really enjoyed it. I loved doing it, and uh, and I 
I'd like most of the people, I suppose, I hoped, you know, um, Fredrickson would, ha would have had another life because at the end he goes back and studies law after Sharp, I think Sharp was court-martialed and he represents him in the court. I mean, that was shot in, in Greenwich in England and uh, we'd, we'd already finished all the location stuff in Turkey and we came back just to do that. And I thought, I hope he gets, because he does, he does have other outings and other, other books, but um, I don't know, that wasn't up to me. I just got on with stuff. <laughs>
It's like, I always used to say Sharp was like the closest an English guy could get to being in a Western. You know, where like the bad guys were the, the French, <laughs> the sheriff and the good guys <laughs> were the, the British army, you know, the English army. It was good fun, yeah. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me, as they say. <laughs>